Shalom, royal family. The class you are about to hear is taught by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, many years ago. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. Also, royal family, you can enroll in classes designed for the Godhead at www.universityofyahweh.org. Enjoy. Hallelujah, Psalms 82.6. All right, let's read Psalms 82.6 now. I have said, you see, you are God, and all of you are the children of the Most High, Yahweh. Here it is written in the law. The psalm is not a book of songs. It says, the law, this is the law. I have told you. All of you are God. And all of you are children of the Most High, Yahweh. Now let's go to God 10. 34. Is it not written in your law that I said? <laughs> Notice who's talking. I said. <laughs> I said it in your law. I said it. You look at it. And I who said it. I am the one that said it. Because I am that I am. I am. That one who is. I am. And I said it in your law because I wrote the law with my own fingers. Oh, you didn't believe I wrote it with my fingers? Exodus 31, 18. Exodus 31, 18. I wrote it with my own fingers. I ought to know what's in the law. I wrote it. Myself. I gave it to Moses. Read. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God Yahweh. I wrote it with my own finger. Well, I thought you were just born. I'm incarnate. I can take human form anytime I get ready. Your enemy knows that. The white people know that. I'm incarnate. Just before the TV sh uh, program, they said, how old are you? Oh, well, that's all right. We know by another calendar, you are another age, much older. <laughs> They said that on the TV fight. Yes, they did. There's a lot of us heard that. They know I'm much older. So why do they try to say I'm born at a certain time? That's to keep your mind on a carnal level. To try to say, well, how can you be God and only be this old? That's why they're so hot on trying to make me be born at a specific time and place. That's why they have traveled all out over the earth searching out this body. 
But as you become inquisitive, I give you the knowledge. I'm incarnate. I'm the mighty God, and yet I'm born. Those who study in secret are supposed to be searching for the light. Then when you study the book, you discover that there's only one man, that's the light. Huh? St. John chapter 1, verse 9. See, I am the light. I'm not a light. I am the. And the whole secret is to try to find the light. That's why you get turned on to a light. But you find out that you were truly walking in darkness, profane, illiterate, horizontal, laying in your grave. And someone took you by the hand. And to make you know your pitiful condition, broke you down to your shorts. Hoodwinked you, put a blindfold over your eyes. To further symbolize the reality that you are blind. You think you're walking in the light, but you've never seen the light. See, that's the first thing that you taught, that you've really never seen the light. To make you know that, you don't know too much. They go ahead and blindfold you because you'd be thinking you're pretty hip. Your enemy had blinded your mind and you thought you were walking around streetwise and educated. So when you, the first thing is you take it into a secret by being blindfolded. And when you're blindfolded, it proves you don't know your way. Someone has to lead you. Lest you stumble, hurt yourself, or lose your life. So the next thing is you find out in order to enter into heaven, symbolized as a secret place. See, heaven is not a place that everybody knows about. A lot of people talk about it, but they don't know about it. So when you're blindfolded, you find out that you can't just walk in heaven. And you don't know how to get in yourself. So you need somebody to knock for you. See, you don't know about how to get in. Then you find out there's a doorkeeper. And, and you didn't know that if you tried to get in without proper authorization, you might have a problem or two. Because these are profane can't just walk in and walk out unless you be in trouble. Praise Yahweh. So you need somebody that knows his way and who has the key, who has the knowledge of how to get in. Because you don't know. And even as you lay in, you don't still don't know what's going on. And to impress upon your mind forever that this is a serious matter. You feel something in your breast that's painful. Painful. And it's so painful, you can't forget that. You don't know why, you have to go through it. Now fear enters your heart. Because you don't know what else painful is getting ready to happen or not. Oh, glory, Yahweh. And you're still in the dark about the matter. And what's to make it worse, you got a rope around your neck. You are cable towed. You know that's dangerous because white folk have hung you ever since you've been here. Boy, to have your hands all kind of maybe bound and blindfolded and got a rope around your neck. <laughs> kind of caught into a situation, kind of bound up. <laughs> you begin to say, what did I let myself in for here? <laughs> see, I've never been there. That just proves I'm God, because I don't have to praise Yahweh. I know everything, all secrets, but I don't have to have been there. 
That's because I'm the blessed only potentate <laughs> of the celestial life for everybody who wanna get to. Me. How can I talk openly like this? How can I put this name that's a secret out like this because I'm not bound? That's the purpose of the coming of the Son of Yahweh is to set those that are bound free. That's I'm the Son and when I set you free, you are free. And then uh, a little later on, you taught how to, you have to kneel before the altar of Yahweh and you don't know nothing about how to walk as an upright man. <laughs> and then, the wing is removed. Say, so you see the light. See an altar with the Bible. Compass in the square, three great lights. Then you see three lesser lights, candles. And then you have to start studying because you're still in the dark. But you've had light shed, hopefully, into your inquisitive mind. And from that moment, you are on a journey. And you labor. Child, and he's seeking the light, the rising of the sun. After you get to 32, you find out you've been to the east and you got to come back to the west. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if the whole purpose of the travel east, why well, you got to come back west? Because I rise in the west. That's right. I'm the sun, and I'm the one to rise in the west. So you got to come back <laughs> to the rising of the sun. Yahweh, then Yahweh. That's me. Now everybody knows the sun rises in the east. In order for the sun to turn around and rise from the west, that's a miracle. See, that defies your knowledge of creation. What that illustrates is wherever I am is the east. Then you have to discover that I'm all four cardinal points. You discover that I'm wisdom and prudence, the east. Yes, I'm food to the west. Yes, I'm the beauty of the south. Yes. And I'm the one to shine the light in that dark corner of the lodge of the north yes, where there's no justice. Yes, the so-called black man of America, the children of Hiram, are sitting in darkness. I'm the one to come and light it up. Yes, Bring justice here to the west. Shine in the north, justice to north America. I'm the one to call you to stand on the square, right? I'm the true light, the great light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's your duty when you find the greater light to walk therein. Yes, sir. I'm calling you out now. You can't stay back there anymore. I'm calling you out. That's your duty. When I call you, you got to come. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that time in history for you to come. Ooh. I'm calling. Yeah. Come and help me build the kingdom of Yahweh, which shall never be destroyed. I'm the one that's taking that stone yeah. from the mountains. regardless of your color. That time in history has come. Hiram was the architect. One of the builders of the greatest temple of Yahweh ever on earth in the history of the earth. Never been duplicated. It's hidden ahead. Buried in the shallow gave in the grave in the west. And many have come and tried to raise you, the so-called black man, the children of Hiram. They were unsuccessful. They had to send back for Solomon. 
to come and raise him and take him back to the east. Behold, the greater than Solomon is here. There are many potentates, but I'm the blessed and only potentate. I'm the grand supreme master architect of the universe. I'm the grand master of the celestial lives, the heavenly lives. I am the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That's me. Now to John chapter 10, verse 34. I give you more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding than you gained in 32 years. <laughs> in one night, you get more with me in one night than you do 32 years of sacrifice and labor. Hallelujah, Yahweh. But at least you appreciate the tools, the working man's tools. You appreciate the working tools of the craft. And that's good. And my children understand that. Oh, glory. Hallelujah, Yahweh. In verse 34, is it not written in your law? I say. You are gods. I took you to the law, took you back and showed you in Psalms 82, 6, where I said it. Now you have to bear witness, I said it. And I'm saying it to you again. Now, notice verse 34, it says, is it not written in your law, I said it. Then in verse 35, if he called them gods, I and he, Check that out. I refers to he. And then in verse 34, he said, he is I. That he and I are one. Oh, yeah. See, when he said it, I said it. And when I said it, he said it. There's no difference between he and I. But I want to call your attention to he yes, sir. and I yes, sir. being one and the same. Yes, John 10, 30. You see, I and my father are one. So whatever he said, in verse 34, I said it. And whatever I said, that I give credit, in 35, he said it. And then when I read what he said in Psalm 82, 6, I told you, I said it. Have not I told you? Then I give my father credit, he said That's just in case you say my body seems to be too young to be back there. Well, he said it. And I said, and I'm saying what he said. He said what I'm saying. And that makes us one. How's that? Because in John 1 and 1, you find out I am the word. And I was with Yahweh from the beginning. And even I was Yahweh as I'm Yahweh now. I was with him and I am Yahweh. We are one, same name. And like I, you'll see on television in the morning at 10 o'clock, I exposed this falsehood. Right on TV, I shot them to death. I renounced their God and the image of their God as false. Right on television. 
They were helpless and could not deny what I said. Then they turned around and asked me, am I the Messiah? Yeah. To ask me if I am means this is not. Or oh, you wouldn't have to ask me the question. Back to John 10. See, it's beautiful to read the book with an understanding. Wisdom knowledge is a great thing, but above all, get an understanding. So when you read your law, I said in it. In your law, I said it. And it's a question mark. Is it not written? Meaning, don't you at least know that? Are you not aware of your law? See, in other words, this law is yours. My people, why do you not know your law? See, that's another question. When I ask you here, is it not written in your law, you are not allowed to sit there and look at me ignorantly. If you do, you're still walking in darkness. Well, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and find out if it's not yours. It belongs to somebody. I wrote it. I know who I gave it to. I gave it to you. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Do what is them? Verse 5. Behold, I have taught you what? Statutes and judgments. And I gave you commandments. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. What? The law. Why? For this is Whose wisdom? Yours. And whose understanding? Yours. In the sight of who? Which shall hear what? And say what? Now when you standing around on the street corner playing chess and checkers, drinking wine and doing drugs, walking as a wine head and alcoholic. The nations know you are not wise. And the nations know you have no understanding about your law and that you have no knowledge of your law. They know you are walking in darkness. In the sight of all the nations, you are walking in the darkness. Now the nations already heard of these statutes and they know they belong to you. And they know these statutes will make you what? A great nation. Now you can understand why the devils in the media and the black devils that have come among us work together to keep my people separated from me. Why? Because I am the light which will shine in the darkness of your mind and cause you to see that this is your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding that will make you great. And to prove it, I have taken those who would come, my first fruit, Dress you in white around America. And then because you began to keep my laws, the laws of Yahweh, then I in turn bless you. And then I began to make you rich and have no sorrow with it. And everybody is amazed. <laughs> now you're with me. I said, I'm going to let you see me come into power. I'm already in power. But I'm going to let you see me. 
How many beginning to see me come? I didn't ask to be on television. They asked me. They've been begging. I am the most wanted phenomenon. For seven years, I denied them. You see, I know how important I was all the time. No, you're not worthy to talk to me. You're, you're too carnal. You're earthly, earthly. Too mundane. Oh, but the pressure's on now. Why are they so excited about me? Because they know I am the resurrection. How do they know I'm the resurrection? Because they look at you and see that you're resurrected. And then they seek to make those who don't know any better afraid to come and see me. Once you come, once you finally build up the nerve to go against everybody who told you don't come, you discover why they didn't want you to come. No one on earth teaches you as I do. You pay big money to learn some of what I teach. One of my words may cost you $500. Righteous to them. Chase, virtue, truth. And they may cost you three to $500 a piece. Caution. And you pay big money to learn that word. Truth costs you a thousand dollars. To get a little token of what I have to offer costs you big money. Why would truth be a secret? They know that freedom is in the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. So to keep you from being free, they bind you. Then you're under a vow saying, I can't talk about the truth. How you ever going to be free, man? Only way you can become free is meet the sun. Greetings, royal family. Let's talk about the most prestigious private university in the universe, the University of Yahweh. It is here where students, parents, adults, and teachers study the divine mind of Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, thus elevating them to contemplate and understand the loftier concepts and principles, enabling their minds to focus and think on an extraterrestrial level. This intellectual ability and unique set of skills supersede all base, mundane, and terrestrial thinking, thus allowing one's minds to open up and flourish with an overwhelming abundance of creative ideas and loftier concepts, making life and living more enjoyable. The University of Yahweh is woven deep within the fabric of the moral principles of truth, honesty, integrity, true holiness, righteousness, ethics, and justice for all. The University of Yahweh is designed for the Godhead, and this includes students, parents, adults, and the Godhead. In the University of Yahweh, the online platform, you gain a structured format to the approach of the divine mind of Yudhe Yahweh. We welcome you to visit our website at www.universityofyahweh.org. 
this platform is specifically designed for the Godhead and the Godhead family. The 144,000 chosen to rule in righteousness. We look forward to working with you as we prepare for rulership in righteousness. Praise Yute Wafe. Praise Yute Wafe. Beit Noon Sophie Yute Wafe. Shalom, world family.